Howdy doody buckaroonies and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. Today's video is another video I didn't really plan to film, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you probably know that I really like effects, so much so that it actually really pissed somebody off on Dogs on Acid, which was just kind of hilarious. But in particular, there's one effect I love above all else. I really like reverb. When I say I really love reverb, what I mean is I download virtually every reverb plugin I can conceivably get my hands on, try it out, listen to it, and try and understand the inner workings of what makes a good reverb algorithm. I am just obsessed with the sound of a good reverb, and it's just one of my favorite things to hear. I don't really know why, it's just super awesome. Over the last couple days, I've been researching and experimenting with a few things to make a better reverb algorithm, and today I figured why not make a video to teach you how to build your own basic reverb. By the end of this video here today, you're going to be able to make your own basic reverb algorithm and experiment with it from there, which should be a whole lot of fun. We're going to be using Bitwig's The Grid in this video because it's probably just the easiest way to visually see all this, but everything you see here can be done in any number of visual programming environments like Reactor or Pure Data or anything else along those lines, so feel free to follow along in whatever you're comfortable with. If you end up making your own reverb that sounds totally awesome or maybe just super terrible in an interesting way, be sure to share your creations with me because I always love to see what you're out there making and of course it's just incredibly inspiring to me to know that the channel has helped people go out and experiment and try something new. Here I've got a reverb that I've cooked up over the last few days with a lot of the things I've learned. So just to demo what you can make using some of these techniques, we'll just do kind of a quick before and after. So here's just the dry loop of phase four in Bitwig. Now let's start bringing that reverb in. Combined with a bit of delay, I think that sounds pretty awesome. This is my reverb I've been working on the last couple of days, and if you want to download this grid preset for yourself, you can do so by becoming a patron with the link down in the description. You get this, you get vital presets, exclusive sample packs, and even a look at what's next on the channel. We're not going to be breaking this preset down here today because it would take way too long, and honestly, there's a fair amount of trial and error involved, and there's been a lot of little tweaks over the last couple days that I just don't remember. But this is the end result so far. So what we're going to be doing instead here is building a new reverb from scratch inside of the grid. I'm going to get a fresh phase four here just so we have a little bit of sound we can pipe through this. I'm just going to turn this into a straight up sine wave and make sure everything just sounds super naked. We're going to be building this reverb in two different parts, the early reflections and then the later stages, which is the big, long, washy stuff you hear. Before we dive into all this, I just want to say two quick things. One, in this video we're going to be building something pretty primitive. Two, we're not going to be talking a whole lot about the DSP side of things, mostly because I don't really feel I'm qualified to talk about that and don't want to talk out of depth here, but beyond that I think it's a little more interesting just to kind of play with things and see what happens, and it's not really totally necessary to understand the inner workings of each step of this process. In order to build a reverb, we should probably take one quick second to talk about what is reverb and how does it work? If we think about reverb, it's really just a bunch of delays, and I guess how can we prove that? You're sitting in your room right now, or on a bus, or in a plane, or wherever, you might be wearing pants, you might have a bag of Cheetos, you might be having a complete mental breakdown, I have no idea, but there's one quick thing you can do to explain reverb to yourself. If we clap our hands, a noise comes out and it hits a wall, and then it comes back. So if I clap my hands, we have the initial clap, ping, I hear it again, that is delay. Now if we think about this in terms of a three-dimensional space, I clap my hands, the sound goes out in all directions, and there's a bunch of different walls and surfaces at different distances, so we have a lot of different time delays that all comes back at different times. Beyond that though, it doesn't just stop, it then goes back around again and pings off other walls and surfaces, and that is a reverb. You can actually approximate a pretty gross and crude reverb by just adding a bunch of different delays at different times with different feedback amounts, and it does work, it just sounds pretty terrible. And this is actually how some early reverbs and some basic reverbs are built, is using things like comb filters, 
which are just delays, and it sounds very kind of brittle and metallic and ugly. So instead of doing that, we're going to be using a different type of delay, which is called an all-pass filter. All-pass filters are a little bit interesting in that it's not really a filter like you would think of a low-pass filter or band-pass filter or something. Instead, an all-pass filter lets everything through, it just messes with the phase. So by combining a bunch of different all-pass filters, we get that diffused sound of a room, and it sounds pretty decent and actually pretty natural. With that in mind, let's kick things off here in the grid by going to the delay section and grabbing just one all pass for now. And we're gonna pipe this through and pipe this out. And if we give this a play, we've got just kind of a little gross, super primitive reverb. And it really doesn't sound that interesting. It actually sounds pretty metallic and yucky. So let's copy this and paste it out a few times. Let's maybe just do four all passes for now. Now what we can do is start putting these things together in different ways. So I'm gonna pipe this into this lower one and then let's just cross them over here, something like that. Then let's go in here and grab a mixer module and we can start feeding this out. So this is gonna go here and this one's gonna go down here and this one's gonna go here. And now what we'll do is just change the delay times of this. Because we're building the early reflections here, we want this to be pretty short, maybe something about like so. You'll really wanna use your ears and experiment a bit, and then we can change the gains of these as well just to see what happens. Maybe we'll do something like that. Now we've got something that sounds quite a bit smoother. Let's actually increase the gain a little bit. Maybe we'll make these ones a little longer. And now we've got a pretty simple reverb. This is just the early start of everything. And as we add more all-pass filters and get more complicated, it's gonna sound even more diffused and washy. If we drop the mix of this down to 50%, it should give us a bit of a better idea what kind of reverb we've made because now we'll hear the dry signal as well. Totally dry. Totally wet. And in parallel. Cool. So that's actually sounding pretty solid, but we're not really quite there yet. One thing we could do to make this more interesting is introduce a filter. So I'm gonna grab a low pass filter and we'll just tie that in here. So now we're adding something different between these two sets of all pass filters. So we're gonna have one that's maybe a little bit darker and why not get a high pass before this stage here and do something about like that. We'll increase the pole count just to make these filters a little more steep and obvious. And now, if we pan this out especially, those subtle differences between these two sets of all-pass filters and little things moving around and being slightly different in the left and right ear, it sounds a lot more diffused and natural, although it is a little pingy. A good way to test your reverb algorithm as well is just to simply do a really short click of either a sine wave or some white noise. So here we're still pretty pingy and gross, but we can start to build on this and make it a bit more interesting. To expand on this idea, I'm gonna add another row of all passes down here and let's feed the output of this all pass into here and then we'll start feeding all of this out. Now we've got another set of all passes going on. It's gonna sound even more diffused and washy. We'll make some subtle changes to these as well. And then let's grab maybe a low pass between these two do something about like that. Let's make these ones a little bit longer on this bottom row just to get a more diffused reverby type sound. Cool, that's actually sounding pretty okay. I'm gonna maybe add another low pass here. Maybe one more on this one. And that way things don't sound so clicky and metallic. So now we've built our basic early reflections.
Sweet. Let's move on and talk about the later stages. To build an actual, more washy reverb, it's actually pretty straightforward. Let's grab a long delay here. And now what we're going to do is feed the output of this mixer into this. And then we can feed this into another mixer. So let's grab another mix module here. Just line everything up so it makes a little bit more visual sense. So this is going to go in here. And the output of this is going to go in here. Now, if we give this another play, I'm going to shorten this to one. It's definitely starting to get a little bit more interesting, but we can go even further by going back to the delay section here and grabbing maybe just two more all pass filters. Instead of feeding directly into this long delay, let's pass this out into an all pass, into another all pass, and then back into this delay. Let's set these to be relatively long, increase the levels of stuff here, and now we've got something that sounds a bit more like an actual reverb. If we solo out this lower layer, now we've got something that's really starting to get cooking here. To start spicing things up and making it a little bit more interesting, let's go back and grab another mixer here and we can start playing with feedback stuff a little bit more. So let's grab the outputs of a few things and start routing them back through things and back into itself here in the grid. Right now we have the output of the early reflections feeding through here and then going through this long delay with a couple of all passes in between. So what we could do as well is maybe start mixing in a different output. Let's grab the output of this all pass and bring it in through the mixer down here. And now we've got something a little more interesting. Why not add something like a single delay here and just offset this by, I don't know, 40, 50 milliseconds. And then let's grab another all pass and put that between these two things. Now let's start filtering that a little bit. Let's maybe just grab a low pass and put it here. And then another low pass and put it over here. And now we've got... A bit more of a clean long section here. If we blend this in in parallel, we can hear this a bit more in context with the original signal. Which doesn't sound all that bad. Just to clean things up here, let's grab a high pass and a low pass and set them here at the output. That way we've got just a nice clean reverb that's not eating up too much space. Maybe we tweak a few things. Maybe not, that's starting to sound pretty gross and weird, so we'll kind of undo ourselves a little bit here and make this a bit more short. And ta-da, we have put together a super basic reverb algorithm. This is certainly not the best reverb algorithm in the world. I think making a reverb is easy. Making a good reverb is exceptionally hard, and that is what separates all of the reverbs on the market. It's not really the fact that it is a reverb. What you're paying for is the algorithm, and the only person who knows how to crack the code of the algorithm is simply the person who made the reverb, which is why reverb algorithms are pretty closely guarded secrets, and everyone's got their little twists and tricks to make their own reverb. It is worth noting at this point as well that there is more than one way to skin a horse, and there are a lot of different ways to build a reverb and a lot of different ways to modify a reverb. There's a ton of information available online, and there's even some resources from the founder of Valhalla DSP talking about what makes a good reverb and some tricks and ideas you can try. And if you're interested in this, I highly recommend reading it. It's really, really cool stuff. One final thing before you go on your adventure here that is worth talking about is adding modulation to the reverb, and that's really where things start to sound a lot better. This is pretty good. 
cool. And it sounds pretty all right, but it's very static. So introducing modulation is where things are going to start to sound a bit more natural and a little bit more smooth. Up in the random tab of the grid here, let's grab a sample and hold LFO. Why not make it two because we're feeling crazy today. I'm going to slide this top thing over to the right. That way we've got a sample and glide waveform that's very, very subtle. I'm going to increase this to be really, really slow. And now we'll add some insanely subtle modulation to things like the all pass filters, the delays, um, maybe even the filters themselves, but typically I don't like the sound of that. Then we'll use the second one here to do the same to everything on the top. Maybe not every single all pass, but this is just a, a super, super basic demonstration. Now, when I'm talking about adding modulation, I'm talking about insanely subtle modulation, values of like 0, 0.00 something. I find anything above 0. 0.007 or so starts to be too obvious. So you've really got to tweak this and spend quite a bit of time here. But once you get it right, it's pretty cool. Another thing to note with the sample and hold here is to disable the retrigger. Otherwise, it's going to sound very crackly. <laughs> Which is gross and nobody wants that. So if we turn that off, we've got a nice, smooth, subtly modulated reverb. If we go through here and start increasing the gain of things and maybe, you know, add a little bit of modulation to this long delay as well, just so that sounds a bit more interesting, we should have a pretty okay reverb algorithm but we're a long way from totally done. I'm just going to increase some of these a bit more. That way we'll have a bit of a longer reverb here. I'm actually just now realizing I didn't end up doing any feedback here because I was trying to talk and explain this at the same time. So in order to do some feedback here, what we could do is maybe bring in one more filter. Let's grab a low pass here. I'm going to feed the output of this long delay into this low pass. This low pass is going to go into this all pass. And now we've got some basic feedback. If we want to feed this into this as well, let's grab a mixer module. So I'm going to put the low pass into the lower output here. Let's grab, I believe it was this output here, feed the mixer output into this. And now we can control the feedback with this. <laughs> Bring that up. And as we go all the way up, we can have this feedback indefinitely. So let's do something like minus one. And ta-da, you've now created a reverb. Expanding on this idea isn't really all that hard. I think the first thing I would recommend is adding more long tap stages. Here in my reverb, I only added three, but you could do as many as you want. Just keep in mind, the more you add, the more intensive this is going to be to run. I've also set up two different early reflection stages just to make things a bit more interesting. One that's very short, one that's a bit more medium, if you could call it that. And then I've passed things through in a lot of different ways by experimenting with connections as well as just kind of logically thinking through what would be an interesting point to loop things back into. As well, adding in something like the modulated delay is a good idea to add a chorus effect into the reverb and inserting these chorus type things at different points as well as experimenting with things like comb filters or whatnot can really help up your reverb game to make something that's a bit more interesting and pleasing to listen to. And it's actually as simple as that to design your own reverb algorithm inside of the grid in Bitwig. I think this is one of those things that just shows why Bitwig is so cool and so interesting and so much fun to experiment with. And I think such a powerful tool for sound design and audio processing and people who maybe just want to experiment a bit and see what they can do. So hopefully this is a fun bit of homework for you to go out and make something with. And of course, as I mentioned, if you make something really awesome or something really terrible but interesting, be sure to share it with me because I always love to hear what you're out there creating. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. <laughs>